Hello, so today what we're going to be doing is looking at lockets and also shops. Um, just a little bit of information, obviously, what you can do uh, with both those items, um, and maybe some couple of little bits of tricks and etc. Um, so first, we'll start with a locket. So lockets for players is very very simple. All you've got to do is hold shift, right click, don't enter any information, just click done and that will give you a locket with your name on it. This will work as well with trap chests. Don't enter your name, that's absolutely fine. And then if we go over to a door, hold hold the shift, right click, click done. That's if we're going to put it on, on the actual door itself. If we don't want to put it on the door, what we can do is, we can put it on top, type bracket, private end bracket click done and it'll automatically fill your name in on second row we can also lock spawners so with spawners what we actually do is if we put a sign on top of the spawner put a door underneath do the bracket private end bracket it'll fill your name in we remove the door and there we go that block is now done now some blocks uh, such as enchantment tables etc can be done as well all we've got to do is we can just put a sign on there if it doesn't automatically fill it in for you all we've got to do is do as we did before where we just put bracket private end bracket and that will fill the information in for you so that's that now if we go back to the chest for creative users um, if you're having this issue with normal chest where you go and right click and you try and put a sign on there and it's not going on for you because it's saying it, you cannot do that in creative mode all we have to do is put the sign down next to the chest type in private we can also do this with a macro that I'll supply at the end of the video um, and then that will snap straight to the chest for you so you're not having to mess about this can be done with any type of normal chest anywhere all we've got to do is make sure that it is next to that bracket private end bracket click done and that'll do for you and that's all you need to do now with shop chests what we have here is some sh some chests lined up so it's a couple of little bits of examples so if we open it up here all we wanted to do is just do a shop ch normal shop chest just put one item in there we can either do item info from um, from a, a command in there slash item info and it will give you the ID or the name of the item do not fill anything in the first line leave that blank that will automatically fill in now the second line we want to say how many items we want to sell or buy so in this instance we're going to do one item the player we want him to buy for 20 so I'll give you 20 dollars uh, in-game dollars for any, any any of the items that they're looking to buy um, and then for this instance we're going to go grilled pork and there we go it's filled in the name for you now the next one we want him to do a sell so if we break this off take that pork back so we want him players to sell to us so all we do is we do that again hold right click hold shift right click leave the first line blank go to the next page so we say how many items it is that we want to buy we want to say how much so we're going to say sell so this is the player selling to us so that items will go into that our chest um, and then we're looking to sell that for 20 again and then we will do grilled pork all done and then if we go onto the next page onto the next sign this one we want to do a buy and a sell so we do as we did before so we want to buy and sell one item buy 20 we cannot have a buy shop and a sell shop with the same price so we're doing sell 19 and then we're doing grilled pork 
So the player can buy and sell from this chest. And if we want him to do a sign where it buys and sells, and we don't want him to sell too many items, we can do this where we fill the rest of the chest in with an item that's not on the sign there. And that will stop us from buying too many items, too many stacks or anything that we don't want to overbuy for. Now, if we go on to the next bit, this is a little trick. So we've got an enter enchanted item here. We do item info. Now, we don't want to fill all that information in because it might get a bit silly. So every single enchant book, every single item that's enchanted or been anviled or anything like that will have a different ID. So this information at the end will be different. All we have to do is instead of having to find the ID, we will leave the first line blank, say how many of the item it is that we want to, s to sell or buy, and then the player will buy this for 200. We're gonna use that at the end, so it's just a one question mark, that's all we're leaving in there, and we click done, and it'll automatically fill in the ID for you on the fourth page. Now this will work, all we need to do if we want to reassign that ID, so use a different book, is we take that out, put another one back in, and then replace the sign. And this is simple as that. Now, the last bit, if we haven't put the item inside the chest yet, we don't know what we want to put inside the chest, um, what we're going to have to do is, we're going to have to put a sign on there, say how much it is that we want to buy or sell or anything like that, put a question mark, um, you'll see that the question mark is slightly emboldened, slightly bold there. Um, all we're going to do is punch that with the item in our hand and it'll automatically fill the ID in for you. It won't do it after that, so it'll stay as that unless you've replaced the sign. Um, and that's as easy as that. So if there's any questions about any lockets or any of the shop signs, just reply below and uh, we'll try and reply to you as quickly as we can. Okay. Thank you. Bye.